this problem I have for you, okay? This problem, very rampant issue, okay? Everyone seems to have it. I have read so many submissions from you, and I tell you this, every person seems to have this problem, okay? And so today we have two stories, and, I'm, and in order to show you what this problem is, I need two people, someone that does it well, and someone that actually ruins it, and doesn't even try. And, and, and it, there's so much to gain by doing this very well, okay? There is so much to gain. I don't even know why people don't do it. And it's such an important part of writing any story. And honestly, it's very important. I've read this story up to chapter 3. And I'm not going to spoil anything, okay? It's quite a beautiful story. Recording uh, start. So the second story by is by Zed. And it's actually it's got a nice title. Samurai Purple versus Ninja Hairstylist by ZD. Uh, and so, the, I, I, to talk about the issue, I really want to get into this, right? The samurai barber is, you know, it starts this way. And I'm going to read the, the, you know, the, up to here. And I want, I want you to see if there is a problem. And then I'm going to go to the other story and I'm going to read the first paragraph. And I want you to see if there is a problem, right? So it goes, the samurai barber was headed to a job interview when someone shouted, Yo, Samurai Barber, cut my hair, yo. Turning to see who had so rudely asked for uh, Tate's services, Ta saw that it was a child, around six or seven years old. Based on the child's sheepish afro and the two friends who were snickering nearby, the child had probably been egged into asking for a haircut. It was five minutes past three, and Ta had a job interview at four. There was more than enough time for some uh, for one haircut. Ta drew Tate Katana. Okay, so you see, it's quite nice. The child comes up to him. They probably egged him on, and he, you know, decides to to do it. It's not bad, right? It's very direct forward. Okay, I mean, I wouldn't say this is this is a crime against humanity, but. Do you spot a problem? If not, let's see. So this story is actually by Salustiano. And, and he, the way it goes here is recording start. Name's Jim Simple. And some time ago, I grew three children in my attic. Grew them like plants, you could say. Okay, now this is the most... I remember when I read this, this was the most stunning, crazy, bizarre, out-of-the-world opening I'd ever seen. But he elaborates on it. Yeah? I know what you may be thinking. Hell. I'm thinking, what are you thinking? But it's as true a statement as I have ever made in my life. And for reasons you'll find out later, an explanation, an explanation is due. Not so much for your sake, but more for mine. A way to make some kind of sense of what went down. I don't know. I tried writing this mm -hmm thing, but I got stumped and couldn't put down a word worth a shit. So, what's a man to do? I got myself a recorder. Nifty little thing. This ain't even my first recording on it. Had to get used to talking to myself. Had to get into the rhythm. Find the place where the muse will lay on my tongue. You see, this is still a rather nice simple opening. But it has it does one thing that the first one doesn't do. And that is voice. <sighs> this story has voice. I tell you this. So many people underestimate the importance of having voice in your story, okay? This is, of course, a first, you know, uh, um, first person narration. And every time I read these first person, uh, stories, the, for example, a lot of YA authors are, are criminal. They are criminal. They are responsible for this. They really are honestly guilty 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 for this crime because on a fundamental level they will have a, an entire book where there's simply just no voice okay look before i really get into it i want you to know something after my false starts because he, he actually does engage in false starts and and i like this i like that he acknowledges okay if i mm -hmm, the show keeps going i live in this bathroom Till I'm done verbalizing everything that went down, top to bottom. And here, here's a, a, you know a bit that I really like. As it happens, sometimes a man's best focus comes to him on a tail on a toilet. 
So it's on a closed lid I'm sitting right now. So the whole, this, this story is being recorded on, on a freaking toilet <laughs> in some motel somewhere. Uh, hoping my jaw loosens up enough to get this whole thing out. A to B. It's a motel bathroom just south of the border. Picture it. I'll probably leave this recorder here, matter of fact. Sit on the sink with a note to bring it to the police. Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, I like this story substantially more because on a fundamental level, it does have voice. And the voice is actually the strongest element about this story. Now, I am really curious about the children and the children that he will be telling us about exactly. And more to that, I am very curious uh, of the character himself, uh, the, the, or yeah, himself. And, 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 you know, on a fundamental level, where does that go? Yeah. And it's such a brilliant hook just with the first page. Just with the first page, you are, you get a taste for the voice, the character, you know, that, that sort of radical nature of the writing. I like this. I really do. I think it's much better to write like this than to write on a f basic fundamental level of one to one describing what happens in the story. Everyone can describe, every writer can do that, but not every writer can, can give it, you know, flavor. It, not everyone, not every writer can have you excited to read the next paragraph. And so this is very important. Like one of my favorite authors, Brandon Sanderson, has no voice. The guy's stories can only be read honestly if you're just interested in the plot. Now, remember, because Brandon, Sa I've read many of his books and I've actually read them to finish. It is primarily because of much of everything else is well structured. OK, so I'm not saying that. For a story to be readable, you need to have good voice, okay? Now, I, I'm not going to spoil any of this for you, but fundamentally, I want you to understand this story really captivates, okay, with its voice. And you can't lose with a good voice. That's what I mean. You can't lose. You can only win with it. And you can see here, you know, the katana was almost as tall as the samurai, and it was impressive how the child was standing still, albeit with eyes shut tight instead of running away. Very direct, very simple. Ta sometimes forgot just how imposing Tate Katana could be. It took a certain amount of courage to do that, and it was so at odds with the child's hairstyle. Ah, this was an easy one. All of the child's sheepishness could be traced back to the ends of Tate's hair, probably because those friends nearby had only started to make fun of the child recently. Ta only had to trim off the ends and bring the child's courage to the fore. But the child's hair was curly and had to be straightforward, uh, straightened before Ta could cut it. Um, it would not do, it would not do to cut off the roots of the child's courage after all. Yeah. So, as you can see, it's a very, very direct, very simple thing. By the time I finish the first page, I don't think I'm looking forward to, to starting this, this paragraph. I, I, I really am not looking forward to starting this paragraph. On a fundamental level, the hook is not there. You see, the voice is not there. Exactly. And even though, by the way, the author, Sal Salustiano, on the other story, has a false start, it's actually not a false start. It's a proper start. Because that start not only has an effective hook, let's, you know, let's take a look here. Of course, you know, these this could be perceived, yeah? This could be perceived as false starts. False start, false start, right? But on a fundamental level, they are actually good hooks. And this establishes the voice, the rhythm, the character's tone, the tone of the entire story, the main premise, the curiosity, the police, the children, where he is at the border. He's at the border, by the way. He's at the border recording in a motel, in a toilet, with a very nice voice. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very interesting story. Hmm? Yeah. It, it's a motel bathroom. So this is what I mean. Even though it, it, you know, he does do these false starts. It's a beautiful thing. It's a great thing. The sort of thing that a writer should be able to pull off. Right. So I don't want to meander of all day. Yeah. I would say this story is substantially better on this regard. 
I want you, you know, you can submit me if you want me to read your stories and show it to everyone and, you know, review it and so on and so forth. You can submit it to me, uh, in my Gmail. Uh, another, that's one thing, but another thing that I offer, you know, by the way, you submit to me, there's no money or anything like that. But another thing that I do offer is, uh, editing services, um, which are official editing services besides just this, this thing here just for fun. So, let me know if you want your story edited and we can discuss all the details uh, over in my uh, email. Okay, so have a nice day. I hope you took something from this story. Bye.